Thanks everyone for coming out today. Uh, it's been a long time coming and we really appreciate that. Uh, I want to introduce the mayor, Katiana Ballantyne, who's going to welcome us to this new park. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out this morning to celebrate the reopening of the Conway Park. Thank you to Ward 2 City Councilor Scott and uh, for being here. Uh, also, Councilor at Large Jake Wilson, Senator Pat Jalen. Let me see, am I missing anybody else? Uh, so point them out to me as, the, as they come in. So, so here we are. After five years, countless soil tests, lots of debates, extensive remediation, a redesign, the renovation, the removal of 8,700 tons of contaminated soil, and a global pandemic. We are finally here. Conway Park will officially reopen today. It feels like after such a monumental effort that the ribbon we plan to cut in a little bit should be a mile long. Don't worry, it's not. But the list of well-deserved thank yous for a project of this magnitude is what is sizable. It takes countless, countless of people to clean up and build a new park. From the remediation experts and the soil testers in the labs to the playground designers and grant managers in their offices to the truck drivers and construction workers on site. So before I begin with all the thank yous, let me first say we always value open space in our densely built community. Our residents know why parks, green space, trees, athletic fields, and play areas matter. Our parks and fields offer a respite to our built environment, support our health, offer recreation, calm our minds, reduce heat, provide habitat for birds and insects, and can help mitigate flooding and other climate change impacts and so much more. In short, all these parcels of open green space that dot our city are workhorses. They work in multiple ways to improve our quality of life. And among those workforces, Conway Park stands out. It is one of the most heavily used recreational spaces in Somerville, from the splash pad to the baseball diamond. So I'm thrilled to invite you back to enjoy this space. But Conway will now be even more valuable than it was before. Thanks to the vision of our staff and residents, we have a thoughtful design that both restores the play and sports facilities while also creating new features that help mitigate climate change and flooding. I want to thank the team for not just replacing the landscape, but for pushing the boundaries to plant dozens of trees, create plantings for pollinators, and build a leading edge stormwater management structures. I'll say it myself, myself and the good ward counselor both wanted to see natural turf in Conway. But we had our say, the majority chose otherwise, and this team has worked hard to ensure we use the best materials to reduce heat, maintain longevity, and manage runoff. So congratulations to all on a job well done. Generations of Somervillians will benefit from the efforts of all involved. So now those thank yous. 
Thank you first to the neighborhood and the residents for all your patience and advocacy. It's been, yay! It has been tough on the neighbors, our athletes, our kids, and nearby daycares, and businesses as we work to remediate and rebuild this site. Thank you for your patience. And thank you to your ward counselor, J.T. Scott, for helping to engage you in the process and for advocating for your current concerns throughout. Thank you to those who approved and provided the funding that made this effort possible. This includes the city council who appropriated the funding for the project, the US EPA agency who helped us with unprecedented work share, and the state which provided financial support via their land water conservation fund. Projects like this could not simply happen without the people behind the scenes at the federal and the state agencies. Thanks are owed to those public servants who ensured this project reached the finish line, especially Bill Lovely and Gary Lipson at the EPA. <laughs> Stephen Johnson from the Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup. Eric Johnson at the Department of Environmental Protection. Melissa Cryan at the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And Robert Lowell at the Department of Conservation and Recreation. We also could not have done this without the meticulous and expertise of Weston Sampson, our licensed site professionals and landscape architects. Weston. Weston Sampson guided the city through this process every step of the way. Special thanks to their team. George Naslis, Joe Spencer, Taylor Smith, Todd Brigoglio, Maria Rudman, Brendan Kunkel, and Cassidy Kraust. Kraust. <laughs> I apologize if I mispronounced any names. Thank you, Cork Construction Company and the Environmental Restoration Company for carrying out the heavy lifting of this project. We all owe our thanks to dump truck drivers, construction crews, landscapers who did the daily work. And finally, I want to recognize the five years of outstanding work and hard work of the many city staff who have toiled on the project since 2017, before we knew the site was contaminated. That starts with our director, Luisa Oliveira, our director, Arn Franzen of the Public Space and Urban Forestry Division, who led the city project team with grace, creativity, and expertise. Critical roles were also played by OSPCD Director George Proakas, Rebecca McKivitz, a peace off, Vidal Deshpani of the Office of Sustainability and Environment. Well-deserved thank yous also go to Parks and Recreation, DPW, especially Director Jill Lathan, Eric Wiseman, and Bill Waldrop, Ben Waldrop. <laughs> community communications and community engagement, and especially Denise Taylor and Erica Mace. Somerville Police Department, especially Deputy Chief Ward and Jennifer Karamfa. So many from the finance and grants, including Director Ed Bean, Alan Ignacio, Jennifer Cavallo, and Laura Haas. And we don't want to forget the lawyers, whether here in City Hall, <laughs> including City Solicitor Frank Wright, consultants, and from the federal government. None of this happens without lawyers, we rarely thank. And again, the neighbors, 
our sports leagues, and the community for their endless patience. If I've left anyone off, please know we are grateful for you too. I'm looking forward to the many beautiful days to come when the playground and the splash pad, splash pad are filled with playing children, the benches are filled with folks taking a break, and the field once again is host to great games. This right here is hard won progress. Now it's time to enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Ward Counselor J.T. Scott. All right. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, for that. Uh, I don't have to do roll call again for everybody. Y'all are all very appreciated. Um, I just want to say that um, this is incredibly exciting. The entire time that I've been a city councilor, this park has been unavailable to folks in the neighborhood, and it's been a missing tooth along Somerville Avenue, something that has been felt by the folks who've lived here a long time, by the daycares that are in the area, the all the different child care facilities in the area. This is, having this back is absolutely a game changer for families in this neighborhood. And I am so thrilled, unreservedly, without reservation, I can say I am thrilled that this is done and that we are back here today to celebrate it. So thank you to everybody for that. Uh, I, I also wanna say thank you particularly uh, to the city staff that, that worked through the very early difficult phases of figuring out what we're going to do here. Um, thank you to Arne and especially Director Oliveira to you for putting up with my obstreperous, obstinate advocacy for the folks in this neighborhood. Uh, living through a project like this, living through the absence of it is uh, incredibly challenging and the only thing that makes it worth it is having an end product that delights you and makes your neighborhood a better place to live. And as I look around this splash pad, as I look at the, the design, as I look at the work that was done to maintain those mature trees, as I look at the trust that's placed in the community to have this movable furniture to allow people to explore, to play, and to make this space their own, I, I couldn't be more delighted and I couldn't have more respect for the high esteem that staff has shown in this design process for the neighbors, both the folks that have been in that building for a million years and for the 35 plus units of new neighbors that are coming in right over across the street from us. So um, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to have this facility back. And I really look forward to working with my colleagues on the city council and our new mayor, who I know values green space, to continue to not just restore what we have here, but to expand an emerald bracelet, as it were, of small parks, of green spaces, of public places where we can continue to come together as community and make, <laughs> to restore some environmental justice to a neighborhood that's been uh, long victimized uh, by some of the worst impacts of climate change. So uh, thank you to everybody. I could not be more excited and I'm really uh, looking forward to what's next. Thank you, Councilor Scott. Next we have uh, from the US EPA, William Lovely, who's the section chief in the emergency planning and response branch. And I also wanna shout out to Gary Lipson, who's not here because he's out following the Grateful Dead, uh, <laughs> but he was uh, an important part of our, of our team. So Bill, if you have a few words. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mayor Ballantyne, Councilor Scott, and members of the Somerville community for inviting us to join you here today at Conway Park. It's really great to be here. And I say that both as an EPA official and as a dad who coached youth soccer for eight years, so I know what it's like to have in these types of fields. We're so proud to be able to join the city of Somerville and Mass DEP to celebrate the completion of the Conway Park cleanup and renovation. As said previously, it took a tremendous federal, state, and local partnership and a creative youth EPA settlement tools to get this project to where we are today and ensure that the city of Somerville had a safe and newly renovated fields for the community. In my mind, this project re represents government at its best. The federal government, the state, 
and the local representatives all coordinated resources, time, and effort to get the end result of beneficial use, and I'm proud that our EPA team played a role with all of you. We understand that public space is a premium here in Somerville, and we are proud to work alongside the city on this project. We are also grateful to be able to celebrate the completion of the cleanup work and have happy to be part of the reopening of this important community asset. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. We also have, as we mentioned, the Department of Environmental Protection here and also the Department of Conservation and Recreation. I want to just take a moment to tell you about some of the features in this brand new park. Uh, and to talk a little bit about the team. Uh, as uh, Bill just mentioned, this really was a team that started, you know, this work started with the residents of Somerville all the way to the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. that funded the project. Um, and the, from the funding to the collaboration on the work, uh, it all was very much a team and a very well-functioning team. I have to say for, for what was done here, we had a, not that many problems. So that's kind of all you can expect on such a complicated project. So this is a performance landscape and it was designed to remove the industrial legacy of Somerville and make a safe space, but also to think towards the future, mitigate and address some of the changes that we're seeing in result of the climate. As the mayor mentioned, this is the most heavily used um, city-owned recreational field. And um, judging from the baseball, the emails I get from baseball, they'll be very happy to get back on here. Um, I'm very tight with the youth baseball now because I get all the emails. I'm happy to you can stop emailing me now. I love you guys. But, <laughs> but we're good now. Um, beneath the, the plant-based field is a uh, stormwater um, infiltration system. And this stormwater infiltration system adds 3,743 cubic, cubic, cubic feet of storage. This means that by reducing the impervious area, regrading the field, adding the stormwater collection system, the new design significantly reduces peak discharge for two, 10, 25, and 100 year storm events. I know that sounds uh, very technical, but it means it really helps with flooding, and we know that we're seeing more and more flooding. In order to uh, make the field, which serves as the cap to the soil below, 5,271 tons of contaminated soils were removed by the EPA. As horrible as the, um, uh, the pandemic was, it was probably in some ways better because everyone was in their house and not watching all the trucks go by. 3,443 3, tons were removed by the city. In total, 8,714 tons of contaminated soil was removed. That's a lot of soil. Um, the field has energy efficient lighting, which in addition to not using as many kilowatts also has a really tight curtain for the neighbors so there's minimized spillage um, the as councillor scott mentioned we were able to pr to preserve the mature trees that provide so much great shade also very important as days become warmer and we added 64 new native trees in total that's a net gain of 17 new trees that were not here um, before the park we're hoping they're going to quickly grow and start to provide more and more shade, which is becoming more and more important. The plant beds are filled with native species to nurture, nourish pollinators and wildlife and to provide some green for all of us. Um, we're hoping that uh, we can take the fences down as soon as they get established. And finally, the new pat splash pad, which many of you are standing on, uh, is going to create a lot of joy and relief from the heat. If you want to bring people to a park, just add water. Uh, again, thanks to, to everyone, but also a real heartfelt thank you to the teamwork that made this happen. I'm going to miss Thursday at one o'clock meetings, but we're done, guys. <laughs> Let's cut the ribbon. Okay.
Maybe over here. Oh, we got some Jake's kids. got a kid. He's got some <laughs> truant children here. Yeah. I think we brought him in too much. Yeah. You ready for this? Who wants to cut it? You cut it. Take the cut. Take the scissors. Cut it. Okay. The biggest pair of scissors you've ever held. Here in, the, in the fall, so. Okay, you can use two hands. Yeah, that's what you do. Okay, you have to wait till they come. They get a lot Let me get into it. No problem, Louisa, get in here. Oh. <laughs> well, you'll stand next to you. Come on, Louisa. Come on, you want to come see? Gotta get in. Gotta get in. Do you see the big, big scissors? Okay. You guys ready? One, two, three.